Hi, okay, I have built the circuit of the capacitor meter and I want to show now that it is working okay. There is a small correction for the last part uh, because basically the place of the capacitor and the resistor is not as I did because the capacitors will go from the analog to ground and the digital control will go from in a resistor to the capacitor. Okay, now I will explain. This is where I should put the capacitor. It's go one side to the analog input and the other side to the ground. And there is not resistor in this place like I uh, wrote in the last session. Okay, there is a resistor of course, which is a part of the RC that is going from the analog input, here is the resistor 1K, to the control digital pin. This is the way it should work. And not the other way, because there is a, a problem in the last uh, example that I did. Okay, but we are learning every day new things. Okay, so I have here a few capacitors, and let's check them. The limitation here that the minimum value that uh, we can measure in this prototype is one microfarad. Okay, and let's uh, try some capacitors. So I will start with a small one. This is 4.7 microfarad capacitor. Hope you can see it okay. Now let's connect and try to find out what we can see in the circuit. Okay, what we need to do is a reset in order that it will start all the cycle. And here it gives 5 microfarad because uh, it can't uh, give us a 5 point something. It's only a a fixed uh, value with no uh, no numbers after the points no floating points okay so here I have 33 microfarad you can see it and let's check it in our genius capacitor meter and again I have to do a reset just after it, it will do all the cycle and will charge. Okay, and we see that it is quite accurate. We have 34. And let me remind you that most of the capacitors have between 10 to 15 per percent of an error. So maybe <laughs> what it shows is better than the capacitor. Hopefully. Okay, here we have another capacitor which is 470 hope you can see it and now let's try with our genius matter I will put again later on the code reset this is a big one so it's take time unbelievable exactly the same number I'm good I'm good <laughs> okay now let's see what we can see in the scope about the charging curve that I have explained so let's take one capacitor connect it and see the charging curve on the scope after a reset Okay, so here's my scope. No matter how I try to arrange my room, it's never arranged enough. So it's not worth trying to do it. So let's recall the setup. Last setup. Okay, a recall save setup. This one. And what I want to show is after we do a single trigger the charge curve on the scope 
okay and here is the curve let me do a little bit of scaling because this is a large capacitor so it takes time to charge it by the way we can calculate the time okay so this is the curve that I have explained the curve of uh, charging that goes like this let's even try to get a better resolution again single trigger and reset and this is the way it should look charging curve of the capacitor ok I will share my code later but again the, I want to remind the error in the last session the way it should be connected is like this from the analog input from the analog input this is my analog input the capacitors go to ground and the same input is going to resistor and to the digital control pin and the control is smart enough to decide if to charge or discharge the capacitor and then we measure the time and by this we calculate the capacitor value okay bye bye for now